on fire. <laughs> oh, people give that disclaimer when they do this list. They say, well, my house is on fire while stranded on an island. I'm just going to tell you guys today, I'm going to talk about my 10 favorite niche fragrances. Yeah. <laughs> so, man, let's get into it, man. What's up, YouTube? I'm Darren D. Bowtie Fragrance Guy on the channel where fashion and fragrance collide. So I talk about looking good and smelling good because both of those things are equally important. So if you want to hear about more fashion and fragrance related content, I hope you guys won't mind hitting the subscribe button. And if you do that, make sure you hit that bell icon as well to ensure you get notified when I upload new content on the channel. So on today's video, guys, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 niche fragrances in my collection, at least my favorites at this given time. Now, I just call the intro of the video because guys normally say that when we talk about 10 niche fragrances or 10 fragrances for life. And my house was on fire and I had to get uh, get these fragrances and get only 10. I would keep these 10 if I was stranded on an island and I only could keep 10. These are my 10 <laughs> favorite niche fragrances. So we can call it or have the list name, my 10 niche for life. If I got rid of the rest of my collection, but I'm really just want to express that to you guys and talk about my top 10. I love doing lists like this because it gives me a chance to really talk about uh, some of the fragrances that I really, really love. I have a lot of fragrances in my collection that I like. I have a lot of fragrances in my collection that I like a lot. I have some, a lot of fragrances in my collection that are okay, that are decent. But these are, well, let me let the cat out of the bag. It's not 10, it's 12 actually, because I couldn't narrow it down to just 10. So it's actually going to be 12 fragrances that are niche fragrances that I love. Now, I did a similar list to this a few weeks ago on the designers. So I'm going to come back next week probably and do my top 10 for life um, high-end designer fragrances or the private blends or the private collections because I think those kind of deserve its own category because there's a lot of, you know, people go back and forth about private blends like, you know, Chanel exclusive fragrances or the Tom Ford private blends or Dior. So I think those kind of fragrances deserve its own list because some people say, of course, it's not niche, but they're a lot more expensive than the average or typical designer fragrance. And I think they're on average, not all in all instances, but on average, a little bit more creative. So I'm going to give them their own separate list of 10 for life. But coming up after the intro, my top 12 niche fragrances for life. If my house was on fire, <laughs> my top 10, top 12 for life coming up after the intro. Keep it locked right here and drink your coffee. All right, guys, we're back. Thank you so much for keeping it locked in. Let's go ahead and jump right into this video. And I do want to say this as well because we're talking about niche. Most of these fragrances that I'm going to talk about today, guys, are available on scentsplit.com. Scentsplit.com. They did not sponsor in the video per se, but because I didn't, they didn't send me any fragrances. But I do like to recommend using Scentsplit and using my link because most of the fragrances on this list, I think all of them are available on Scentsplit to sample. Niche fragrances on average are a little bit more expensive. So before you, you know, jump out there and get a full bottle, I think it's good to sample fragrances. Now, you may be like me and you're at that point in your journey where you know what you like and you can kind of look up notes and know, even if I don't love this, I'm probably going to at least like it. You know, so if you're there, it's fine. Uh, but if you do want to sample first, go ahead and check out scentsplit.com. I'll make sure I link it down below. So the first fragrance up on the list today comes from the House of Parfums of Marley, and this is Latent Exclusive. Latent Exclusive. Now, one thing that I did do with this list, guys, I tried to keep it to uh, only choosing one fragrance per house. Now, the reason that I did that is because there are some fragrance houses, especially on, in my niche collection, that I, I honestly, if I'm just being complete, completely honest, I could have chose three or four from certain houses, especially Killian. Um, the House of Parfum, the House of Parfum de Marley is another one. There's so many fragrances that I like, but I went with Latent Exclusive because 
You still have the original latent DNA there, but this one performs just a tad bit better and it has a little bit more um, creativity to it if you just compare it to the original based on adding that coffee and a few other earthier kind of notes in this one. Made it a little bit darker which is what I would expect from an exclusive uh, exclusive version or variation of a fragrance. But this stuff is absolutely freaking dynamite. I love this fragrance. Again, I could have went with the original Layton. Of course, I could have went with Carlisle or Wajan or Hobden, to be quite honest with you, but I just went with this one. <laughs> so, you know, check it out, guys. Again, this is from the house of uh, Parfums and Marley. One of my favorites, man. This is Layton exclusive. Now this next fragrance is one that I've talked about a lot on the channel as well over the past year from the house of Zhirjov, Pico Valladama. Pico Valladama. This fragrance has gotten its, its wares for me this year. I love this stuff. Oh my gosh, this is good. This is so good, man. It is clean florals and aldehydes. That's really what this fragrance is, man. It's so clean and soapy and it lasts all day long on my skin. A lot of times it's hard to find a fragrance that, that is this clean and this fresh that is going to last all day long, but that is what they were able to accomplish with this fragrance. That's one of the things I love about the House of Jerjoff. Overall, you're gonna get quality. You're gonna get quality fragrances and this is no different. I absolutely adore this fragrance. So check it out. It is from the House of Jerjoff. This is called Pico Valladama. Check it out. Another fragrance that I've talked about here a lot recently, and this one comes from the house of Bodicea Victorious, Valiant. Valiant. Look at that bottle, man. I always say this when I show this, but God dang, man, look at that bottle. This stuff is, fragrance is dope. The bottle is dope. I just can't get enough of it, man, to be honest with you. Super expensive fragrance, but again, it is what it is. What do you do? I'm done. I'm done. This stuff smells so good, man. Orange blossom, pedant grain. That again gives this clean, almost soapy feel to it as well. Uh, with this one, you got white florals in here. You got some jasmine uh, in this. You have uh, orange as well as mandarin orange, and then you have this very creamy sweetness that kind of envelops all of the the florals and all of the citruses in this fragrance with vanilla, tonka bean. This is an absolute 10 out of 10 fragrance and that's why I made the list. Now, very easily Blue Sapphire could have been on this list, but again, I wanted to keep it to one fragrance per house. So this just, just edged out Blue Sapphire because I have other rose fragrances on the list. So that's kind of that was kind of my justification, but easily could have been Blue Sapphire on, uh, on this list. And honestly, if I was just doing not considering how many from each house, Blue Sapphire probably was on the list along with this. But anyway, another story for another day, maybe another video idea, but check it out from the house to Boulder City of Victorious. Again, this one is called Valiant. All right, guys, this next fragrance uh, the, is one that I kind of, I think I kind of started the hype on this one. And those of you that have tried it, love it. This fragrance comes from the house of Bond number nine, it's Lafayette Street. It's Lafayette Street. Um, I'm kind of looking at this list as a collective or just like a collection. If I only had these 12, I wanted to do something that was dumb reach approved. And that's this one. I mean, I went back and forth uh, from the house of bond number nine. I could have did New York. Ooh, but again, I have other rose fragrances. Um, I could have did Sin of Peace for him, or I could have did Bleecker Street. But and the, at the end of the day, because of the versatility, the versatility of this one and how easy it is to wear it, I want to have one dumb reach, so that's how I came to, to the conclusion to include Lafayette Street on the list. So you guys know what this is. It's got some florals in here, and it's really, really spicy. This is a really spicy fragrance, but it's sweet as well, but not overly sweet. It's just the perfect signature scent. So check it out from the house of Bond number nine. Again, this is Lafayette Street. Another fragrance that needs no introduction on my channel, so I'm gonna just talk about this one briefly and move on from Frederick Mall, Portrait of a Man. Portrait of a Man by Frederick Maul, of course, formerly known as Portrait of a Lady. But you guys know how we rock, man. When we put it on over here, guys, it's Portrait of a Man. That's what it is. When we rock it, it's Portrait of a Man. When we rock it. But this stuff is so good, man. 
a little bit of incense here, some patchouli, of course, rose, the main notes here. Fantastic fragrance. Again, I will. I have to always mention this when I talk about this fragrance. This still holds the record for the most compliments on a fragrance in one day. I got seven compliments in one day on this fragrance. So one of my favorites, done by one of my favorite master perfumers, Dominique Ropion, who actually was uh, one of the perfumers on my fragrance, uh, Obad. Well, it's Lyric now, formerly known as Obad. So anyway, check it out, guys, from the house of Frederick Mall, Portrait of a Man. Another fragrance that I would keep that needs no introduction from the house of by Killian, Straight to Heaven Extreme. Straight to Heaven Extreme. I will tell you guys, like this is discontinued and the performance isn't quite as good on the original Straight to Heaven, but just get the, the original Straight to Heaven. I mean, this is just an amped up version of it. The rum uh, is more pronounced, the cedar wood is more pronounced in this one and it lasts longer than the original Straight to Heaven. But outside of that, I mean, it's really essentially the same fragrance. But because of that amped up booziness in this one and the performance, that's why I, <laughs> this one gets denied. This is the one fragrance in my collection that the missus goes absolutely crazy over. And uh, of course, it's one that I love, I love myself. It just smells very regal. Um, I smell very high end. You know, you're not going to be walking around and smell a lot of guys that are wearing something like this. So anyway, check it out. Check out the original Straight to Heaven. It's just as good, you know, in its own right. From the House of Bob Killian, again, it's the Straight to Heaven Extreme. All right, guys, the next fragrance on the list, another one I kind of helped to get the hype going on this one right here, but for good reason, from the House of the Harmonist, Hypnotizing Fire. Hypnotizing Fire. Again, another one I've talked about a lot here recently, so you guys know how I feel about it. I actually did a full review on it. If you want to see that review, I'll link it. <laughs> mm, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves. This stuff is so good. It's so good. Guys, just check it out. Check it out. Again, I did a full review. I don't want to go, uh, go on and on about this because I got 12 fragrances here, but just check it out, man. This stuff is good. It's from the House of the Harmonists. Again, this is Hypnotizing Fire. All right, the next fragrance on the list comes from a fragrance house that had to be represented on this list as well for me. From the House of Amouage, Jubilation 25. Jubilation 25. For me, another fragrance house that very easily could have had three different fragrances that uh, would make a list like this that was in high consideration. This Reflection Man, Dia Man, and of course, journey man which was right there but man when i sit back and really think about the house of Amouage, to me this is the most representative of what the brand is about creativity uh fragrances that perform well that are have very high um and expensive ingredients and things of that nature in it this is what it's all about right here man i mean and this thing has a, a note pyramid longer than an encyclopedia but i mean you got plum in here um, you have, um, I mean, you have blackberry in here, you have uh, patchouli in here, you have, I mean, again, you name it, it's probably in this thing. Again, I always say that. You name it, it's in this honey, albinum, incense, everything is in this fragrance, man. <laughs> and it all combines and meshes well to be just the perfect representation of a, a creative Middle Eastern fragrance. So that's why it's on my uh, 10 for life or 12 for life from the House of Amouage. Again, this is called Journeyman. All right, the next fragrance on the list comes from the House of MFK, Maze and Francis Kirk John. This is Oud Satin Mood. Now, this is the Extract de Parfum. Of course, I do have the uh, EDP as well. Can't go wrong either way. Same great fragrance. Believe it or not, the other one lasts as long as the other one lasts. This one lasts a little bit longer. <laughs> you know what I mean? But Oud and Rose. Oud, rose, and that's kind of like this plum feel to this fragrance as well. I think plum is in it. But anyway, that's why I left off um, Blue Sapphire because, again, I had other rose fragrances on the list. This was on the list. Uh, Portrait of a Man was on the list. So I had some other rose fragrances here. So, you know, it's kind of sort of how I justified it. But anyway, from the house of MFK, again, this is called Oud Satin Mood, and this is the Extract the Puff on. This next one is probably my favorite fragrance of all time. 
There's a lot of imitators and a lot of inspired by fragrances, but none of them capture the essence of this fragrance. It's from Creed and it's Aventus. You rest assured, guys, if I can only have one fragrance probably for the rest of my life outside of my own fragrances, which of course you guys know I don't put my own fragrances on lists. Those go without saying. I'm keeping those the rest of my life. But if I can only have one fragrance outside of mine, this is it. This is it for everything that it is. Nothing captures the essence of this completely. Put it to your nose, compare it side by side to these other fragrances, you'll know what I'm talking about. From the House of Creed, this is Creed Aventus. All right, you guys, of course you know because you, you follow the channel. And if you follow me on Instagram and stuff like that, you guys know I like to dress up. I dress up like this for work in the whole nine. So I have to have one good fougere or chipra kind of fragrance. And this is the best one in my collection. The Agalea from the House of Roger Parfums. This is another house where I could have had several fragrances to make a list like this. Creation E, um, Elysium, as well as, what's the other one that I love? Oh, uh, Burlington 1819. All, any one of those honestly could have made the list, but if I'm looking at this from a collection standpoint, I needed to have, because I dress up so much, one Chipra, one slash kind of Fougere scent, and this is it. It's amazing, man. It's amazing. You just got to check it out. I know it's expensive, but if you like more traditional smelling fragrances, you like Chipras, uh, you like Fougere kind of fragrances, this is one you got to check out. I'm telling you guys, it is absolutely amazing. And again, this one lasts all freaking day on my skin. Oh my gosh. It's from the House of Roger Parfums. Again, it's called Diagolev. All right, guys. And last but not least on the list, this one comes from the House of Initial Parfums, and it's this Bless Baraka. Bless Baraka. This is another one that I've talked about a lot here over the past year. I love it. It is This fragrance is really about musk, cinnamon, and sandalwood. Musk, cinnamon, and sandalwood. So you have the musk, then you have that slightly spicy, sweet cinnamon and the creamy uh, sandalwood. And that's really what this fragrance is at its core. Those three notes and uh, some amber in here as well, I think. Try it. Try it, try it, try it. It's from the house of Initial Parfums, guys. I love this stuff. This is Bless Barack. But that's it, guys. That's my time, man. I hope you enjoyed this list today as I gave you my 12 niche fragrances for life. As always, I sincerely appreciate your time. I appreciate you guys' attention to these videos. You don't have to watch them, but you do. And sincerely, I appreciate that. And don't forget, guys, to make sure you take a few moments to go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you are sharing these videos out to some other folks that you think could use this information or may even find it entertaining. Because I'm your guy, Darren. I'm the Bowtie Fragrance Guy. I love to look good. And of course, I love to smell amazing. So until next time, guys, keep looking good. Keep smelling even better. I'll catch you on the flip side. <laughs>